Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Uh, today is the first from the bench video where I'm going to be showing you some work uh, from my workbench using some electronics. Um, and it's brought to you because uh, a little while ago I was approached by Big Tree Tech. Um, they asked if I was interested in creating some content featuring some of their devices and products. Um, and so, uh, full disclosure, um, Big Tree Tech did send me uh, for this video an EBB SB2240 CAN bus tool board, which is what this video is going to be about. Uh, so, I'm going to walk you through setting it up um, using a few Big Tree Tech products. Um, and I'm going to refrain from trying to give any opinions or reviews uh, on the products. This is strictly a how to video on how to go about setting up and installing and configuring it. Um, and then beyond that, um, do your research on your own to see if this product might be uh, something that you want to incorporate into your own printers. All right, so to start off, here I am on Big Tree Tech's uh, GitHub repos, uh, repo list. So I did a search here for EBB, and I'm going to click into their EBB repository. And there's a few options in here um, that are relevant to what we're talking about. Um, my case, I'm looking at the EBB SB2240 board. So I'm going to go ahead and click into there. So here's a number of files and features there of that board, um, including, so for the SB2240, uh, uh, if I go into the hardware folder here, I can pull up uh, details like on the, the pinout and so on and so forth, the input output. Um, I can see uh, an image of the board pinout. So that can be useful for setting things up later. And the build guide uh, is a user manual available in both English and Chinese. Um, and so the user manual will give us details on how to work with the product. Uh, I'm already a bit familiar with this, so I'm going to skip showing you the user manual, but do feel free to reference it here if you decide that you want to review it for any reason. Um, and then in addition to that, um, there are some custom printed parts that Big Tree Tech provides uh, in order to uh, ease the installation of this uh, product onto a stealth burner tool head. Um, they do provide the STL files and the step files. So if you need to modify them in CAD, you can use the step files to do that. Uh, otherwise, you can just download the STL files and print the parts that you need for your installation. All right, so I said this was a from the bench video, and the reason why is because I'm going to give you a view onto my workbench. I've got my mouse here to control my computer. Uh, I've set this up using OBS Studio, um, and I'm using the phone that I normally record my videos on as the overhead view on a tripod, so hopefully it won't get too shaky. Uh, I apologize. This is the first time I'm setting it up this way, so. Uh, hopefully the video quality is sufficient, but uh, apologies in advance if anything goes sideways. So what do we have on my workbench? Uh, at the back here, I've got an old power supply that came out of an Ender 3 Max, um, and I've hooked, set it up as my power supply for my workbench. I have an Octopus uh, Pro uh, version 1 here. Um, MCU, so this is the primary MCU that would drive a, a printer like say a Voron V2 or other printers that need multiple stepper drivers. I have a Raspberry Pi Zero W2-2W. Um, not sure the exact order of those. It's W2 or 2W, one of the two, um, that I've already pre-installed with um, Mainsail OS 64-bit as well as Clipper, Moonraker, and Mainsail. I have a Big Tree Tech U2C version 2.1, which is going to be my uh, CAN adapter board between the Pi and the uh, SB2240. I have here the SB2240, which is the focus of this video. And um, 
it has a few features, so I'm just going to quickly, while I've got it on screen here, hopefully this view is fine, there's not too much glare. Uh, what we've got here, this is the header for the uh, front PCB. Uh, the product comes paired with a sideboard, and this, uh, say sideboard, it's actually a front board because it sits uh, on the front of the uh, stealth, head, stealth burner, um, so it basically connects over here like this. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so this controls, this sideboard, first of all, controls uh, the fans that you might have on the front of the stealth burner, um, as well as gives you a, a pinout for the RGB um, connectors if you have LEDs mounted on your, on your tool head. Um, so we'll get to that in a bit. A little bit more about this board. Uh, we have a number of um, 1.25 millimeter pitch um, JST connectors. I believe they're also maybe called Pico Blade. Not 100% sure if those two are synonymous or not, but they're very close. Um, and they are rather small. Um, so there's lots of room on the board for a number of um, connectors, and that's great. We have a thermistor connector for your hot end thermistor. We have a four pin connector for an um, for a PT100 or PT1000 thermistor, if you want to use that as well. Um, over here, we have end stop connectors for uh, different types of end stops. Um, the pin, you'll see more details in the pinout there. We have some pins here for different fan headers, and they control the voltage going to the fan. Um, down here, we have a uh, two pins that are a uh, they're intended to be jumpered for a 120 ohm resistor uh, which is needed for CAN bus operations and then up here we have two more pins that are um, used to power the board via USB um, and then we have our um, CAN bus connectors here uh, which is using an XTX uh, 30 plus 2 um, connector, which is common in the radio control um, vehicle industry, but not so much, um, you know, fairly new in 3D printing. There's a few boards that have this connector, and we're starting to see it become uh, more of a thing in 3D printing as well. Um, and this includes your power and your CAN bus high and CAN bus low pins that'll run to the rest of the electronics bay. The USB port for controlling the board or powering the board via USB. And then over here we have our um, motor connector. And down below here we've got the um, hot, end, hot end connector, which is a microfit connection there. Um, yeah, so this is running the um, an STM GOB1 um, chip for its main controller. And then on the other side, we have the stepper driver, which is this square chip here. And that is running the new TMC2240 from, um, from Trinamic. Um, and so where that chip is, if I flip it over to the other side, we'll see the reverse side of the board. The front side of the board has this gold pad here. And so this gold pad is actually uh, connected to the TMC2240 on the other side. And that gold pad is where you would put the heat sink that is included with the board. So we can mount the heat sink right basically in this spot like that. Um, some people mistakenly put the heat sink on the STM chip. Um, and while it's not a bad idea to have a heat sink on the STM chip, they only give you one heat sink in the package, and the heat sink is intended to go here, not here. If you happen to have more similar heat sinks, or you can buy them on Amazon if you choose, um, you can put a heat sink on the STM chip as well, and it won't affect anything, it won't harm anything. In fact, it'll help to keep your STM chip cool. But that single heat sink is intended to go on the uh, terminals on the other side of this um, TMC2240 chip here. All right. Um, so in addition to that, I have a selection of other things. I've got a stealth burner tool head. Um, some of those uh, custom parts that Big Tree Tech provided, I've printed here. And I've got everything ready to uh, 
seeing this on a printer is because at the moment, neither of my two Voron printers actually have a stealth burner tool head on them. Um, I've replaced the stealth burner on my Voron uh, V2 with um, a different tool head, a dragon burner from Chirpy. Uh, and I'm happy with that tool head. But um, so in, in order to produce this video, I've basically um, put this tool head together. Um, full disclosure, I did have some print quality issues with this part as I was uh, taking it off the printer, I realized the bottom surface isn't fantastic. So that's my fault. That's not in the Big Tree Tech design. Um, however, this uh, shroud, this fan shroud for a stealth burner is in fact the custom part that Big Tree Tech uh, provides for their Nomi display device, which mounts in the uh, in front of the part cooling fan. Uh, and I'll be doing another video on the Nomi device uh, sometime soon. So that's why I've printed this part. You'll notice it has these uh, air holes here to allow for airflow with the Nomi that occupies uh, this space. Um, so if you're wondering why this part is here, that's why. Some of the other custom parts that were included um, in that repo uh, was a different back plate for the Clockwork 2. Um, that's supposed to give you a bit more room for mounting the um, mounting the board because the board sits here on the side of the clockwork two extruder, kind of like that. Sorry, put that in focus in the camera. There we go. So the board basically will sit here. We'll attach it with a couple of screws to the side of the clockwork two extruder. Um, and then the other parts that were included are uh, a support arm for the um, CAN bus or USB cable on the back of the stealth burner, a, a new stealth burner side door um, that is supposed to give a bit more clearance for the board, for the uh, SB2240 board. Um, a few um, basically strain relief mounts, I guess, for different connectors, whether you're using the CAN bus um, cable or the uh, USB cable. Um, there's a clip here that's also in that repo uh, that allows you to basically, uh, you know, clip your cables together. Uh, I'm not going to use this myself, um, but I printed it out just to show you. So I'll set that aside for now. All right, um, moving right along. So what do we want to do if we want to set up CAN bus? Uh, the first thing we need to do is to um, go to our Pi. And you'll see that I had been running KAUH here before. So let me just quit out of that. Um, for this video, I'm going to reference uh, a guide on GitHub from Esoterical. It's called Voron Canbus. Um, so let me just pull up that guide. And um, this guide basically gives you all the details you need to get set up with CAN bus on your clip printer. In my situation here uh, with the hardware that I've got selected, uh, I am going to be um, using a tool head um, I'm going to be using a CAN adapter, which is the UTC. The tool head in this case is the SB2240. And so I'm going to follow the steps in here. Now, the first step uh, for any um, CAN bus install, and it's common to pretty much all of them, it does vary a little bit depending on the uh, build or distribution of Linux that you have installed. But um, for mine, what I want to do is set up this CAN0 file here. And so I'm just going to scroll down here to this step. And it's the first thing I do whenever I'm setting up CAN bus because um, it really is kind of needed in common for everyone. So I'm just going to paste that line into the command prompt here. It's going to prompt me for my password. Going back to the website. I'm going to copy these four lines. Now, 
there's some variance. If you follow, if you've seen a few different guides on Canvas, um, there's some varying, you know, values in this this file that go into this file depending on the guide you're following. Um, these are the ones that work best for me. Not saying any of the others are wrong, but I'm just going to, you know, follow the steps in this guide. Uh, what is critical about these values um, that you need to get correct across the rest of the uh, installation is this bitrate value. So in this case, the example here uses a bitrate of a million bits or a megabit. And um, when you're flashing or building your firmware for your devices, if they have bit rates um, included in them, you want to be sure that all the bit rates match. And why that is is because most of these devices use the CAN bus 2.0 protocol. And that protocol does not allow for the devices to auto negotiate their speed between each other. So if you set them to be different values, one thing is set at a million, one thing is set at half a million, another device is set at 250,000. Those devices, because they're operating at different bitrate speeds, are not going to be able to communicate with each other. So throughout the rest of you know, your setup, make sure that wherever you're referencing a, a bitrate speed like this, you're using the same value everywhere. And for you know my purposes, I don't see any reason to shortchange myself on speed. So I'm going to leave it at a million. And again, I'm just going to copy this uh, block into the terminal software. and paste it as is and not make any changes whatsoever. Now to quit out of the nano editor, which is what I'm in right now, um, it is a, a text editor, so you can you know, use it to, to make changes to your files if you wish. Um, to exit, I hit control X. Down at the bottom, it does ask me if I want to save the modified buffer. I'm going to select yes. And then it asks me what file name I'm going to save it to. I'm going to keep it as uh, the file name that I'd selected previously when I started the command, the nano command. So we'll just leave it as is. That is the correct file name in the correct directory and hit enter. And so that uh, put me back to my command prompt. And if I want to validate, just to confirm that that file has been created and is correct, I'm going to issue the cat command. And I'm going to type etc network. D forward slash can zero. And remember, if you're typing in Linux, uh, Linux is case sensitive, so be sure you're getting your capitalization correct um, as you're typing commands in Linux. So the cat command just basically displays the contents of a, a text file or a file in Linux. Um, where possible. So in this case, it is just a text file that I created called can zero. And you can see that it does in fact have the values that I pasted in momentarily. Um, so, or a short while ago, not momentarily, it's the wrong use of the word. So the file is ready to go. Um, however, in order to um, make sure that the system is ready to uh, communicate over this new network protocol that we've set up, we need to reboot. So I'm going to issue the reboot command on the Pi now. And it will kick me. I will get back in there in a bit. Give it a moment. So what's next? Next, we're going to look at what's on the workbench. So I have a Pi that's already formatted, um, has the SD card formatted, and it has Clipper, Moonraker, and Mainsail installed. Um, I have my MCU here, which in my case is a Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro. Um, I haven't bothered installing any stepper drivers because they're not going to be needed for this, de this video demonstration. Uh, I haven't installed any jumpers or any of the fan headers or anything like that. What I have done, however, uh, because I plan on um, I want to put this board into DFU mode um, so that I can flash new firmware to it. And so uh, I need to jumper this 5 volt pin here to allow it to draw power from the USB port. And I also need to jumper, it's a little hard to see, but it's right sandwiched between these, these pins here. Um, I need to jumper the boot pins, which is just up here between uh, just north of the uh, EXP2 or EXP1 headers. Um, so that with those pins jumpered, 
I'm ready to feed this guy power from the USB and I'll get that USB power from the Raspberry Pi. All right. And we can see that um, there's now, it's maybe hard to see in the video, but there's some red LEDs that have lit up on the board to indicate that it is in fact powered up and live. Okay, so now I just need to kick off, uh, reopen my terminal window because that's where the next step is gonna take us. Sorry about that, took a moment. Um, so I'm going to log in here as, as my Pi user. And that text got really small. Let me see if I can fix that. Um, All right, sorry about that. I'll need to change my default settings on my um, in PuTTY so that the display comes up with slightly larger text so it's a little more legible. Old man, uh, old man eyes from old guy here, yeah. Okay, um, so next thing we wanna do now that we're back into the Pi is we want to first of all confirm that the Pi sees the uh, octopus over that USB connection. And we can do that a couple of different ways. Uh, an LSUSB uh, shows us, in fact, that I have a STM device in DFU mode. So uh, the Octopus is already in DFU mode, ready for me to flash um, software to it, which is great. So the first thing I want to do in this case is I want to install a CAN boot onto the Octopus. And CAN boot is optional. But it can be rather useful. So I'm going to go ahead and go get can boot. Um, arc signs GitHub repo. In this case, just going to copy this first line. It's going to go ahead and pull that down and throw it into the can boot directory. Just takes a moment or two and we're done. So let's just see what happened here. Uh, in fact, uh, if I do a list, an LS to list the files, we can see that can boot is there in blue. The blue indicates that it's a directory, a, a directory that we can change into or get go into. So I'm going to type CD, change directory, and then can boot. And then LS here. All right. So there's a number of uh, files and scripts in that directory as well. So with can boot, um, what we want to do here is uh, do a make menu config. And again, I'm following the steps from the um, from Esoterical's guide on that website. Um, but I, I've done this a few times now, so I'm pretty comfortable with the steps. So we need to change the microcontroller architecture to STM32. Processor type, in this case, my board is a F446 board. 
Uh, if you have a different chip on your Octopus and that chip is underneath this heatsink, I know it's a 446 because I looked at it previously. Um, but if you want to know what chip your board is running, it'll be uh, the one that is in this location on the board right below where this heatsink heat sink is currently mounted. Um, so do be sure that you're building the firmware for the correct chipset. case, I am going to use a 32K bootloader. I'm going to set the clock reference here. Again, my board uses a 12 megahertz crystal. Um, your board may have something different. So do um, some research into which board you have. You need to know a bit about your hardware before you do this. So I strongly encourage you to go online and, and do some digging. Um, you know have a physical look at the board, determine what chip you're running on the board, um, which version of the board you're running, and then go online and, and find some reference material for this. Um, a lot of this, these details, most of these details are available on that uh, esoterical Voron CAN bus um, GitHub repo that I linked you to earlier. The communications interface here is still going to be USB. Um, I'm not setting this up in bridge mode. That is an option but that's not the option I'm following through with today. So I'm gonna leave it um, as USB on PA11, PA12, which is the default. And then I'm gonna quit. So now what we want to do is run the make command. And it's going to go ahead and build the firmware. While that is happening, I'm going to switch back to my web browser. Done with the um, can boot repo here. So I'm going to go back to the Esoterical Voron CAN bus repo. Thanks to Esoterical for, and everyone who's contributed to this repo for all their hard work. Um, it's an invaluable reference that I, I use a lot as I'm setting things up. So what we're doing here is mainboard flashing. And so there are uh, more general information and there's a lot of reading here, but I encourage you to follow through and not skip any steps. Don't try to jump ahead. Um, you will end up with things not working well if you do so. Um, so we're talking about here installing CAN boot and I have you know installed CAN boot and I've basically built it uh, the way I want it to. Um, and then I'm compiling the firmware. So it's telling us in order to flash CAN boot to the board, um, we're going to need the board in DFU mode, which conveniently we've already put it in DFU mode because of the two jumpers that I showed you earlier. So we're all set and ready to go, um, but I will just issue this command on the Pi just to confirm that it's doing what we think it's doing. All right, so it's finished building um, the can boot uh, bin file, which we're gonna flash to the tool head. I am gonna run this command just to see what gets reported here. And in fact, I'm getting some values. So it's found DFU. Um, and I know from experience that this uh, address, this these uh, hex characters represent the address of the um, big tree tech board that I'm working with. So that's great. Um, so going back to website, it wants us to basically flash using this command. I've already done the make in the can boot directory, so I've done this part already. I'm going to just copy this line. Go back to my terminal window and then flash that file. So 
So in this case, we've told the DFU util command to do a mass erase, which um, is just going to wipe anything else that was on the, already on the board. Um, it's just a safety precaution to make sure that there's you know nothing else uh, lingering in the board's uh, CMOS. So this can take uh, a moment or two. However, there it is. So downloading, download done, file downloaded successfully. Um, so there is an error reported at the last line here. However, um, we can safely ignore that error. Uh, we know from experience it'd be nice if it didn't report an error to us there, but the important part here is the line above that where it says file downloaded successfully. So if you got file downloaded successfully, you're ready to proceed to the next step. But if not, if you ran into a problem, then your board may be in an unusable state and you want to be careful um, before proceeding uh, if you got some kind of an error message there during the file download. Uh, if so, then I encourage you to go on online forums, uh, your favorite forums or Discord server for your 3D printing community, and find out more details about the errors that you've seen um, to see you know, what needs to be done to troubleshoot those. Because um, if you did get errors at that stage, then you're not ready to move forward and you should, you know, stop the presses, hold on, let's let's back up and take a breath and figure out what happened. But in this case, file download successfully is what I want. Um, so I'm ready to move on to the next step. And for me, the next step um, is going to be to flash the board with Clipper not in CanBridge mode. Uh, bridge mode is used for um, for devices where, like the Octopus, where you have a, let me just quickly shift to the workbench screen here, where you have an RJ or a, a CAN bus header. On the Octopus, it happens to be an RJ12 port, but it could be just a couple of pins, for instance, on, on other boards. Um, if your board already has a CAN bus transceiver, and you'll need to determine whether your board does or not. Um, you don't need to use the UTC. Um, you can wire the tool head board directly to the CAN bus transceiver on your main board if that's the case. And if you want to do that, you absolutely can. Um, I'm not going to judge whether or not you, that is the rec correct approach. Um, it's up to you to try that and see if that works for you. Uh, it does save you the cost of a UTC board, which you may not need. Uh, in my case, I did have some issues uh, that led me to first run in bridge mode originally, and after several months, I switched to using a UTC. That's not to say that that's the right approach. It just what what is worked for me. So um, that's a decision you have to make on your own, whether you're going to run in bridge mode without something like a UTC or whether you want to put a UTC in the middle and have it be the communications interface for the CAN bus network. Totally your call, whichever approach you want to take. Neither is better. Um, depends on what works well for you. So in my case, I want to flash the octopus um, not in bridge mode. So I'm going to go to back to the website. I'm just looking here. I go up to the top of the website and in this case, I'm going to click into common hardware and there is a big tree tech octopus here. This page tells you, gives you details on your specific hardware, of like how to get it into DFU mode, the jumpers that I showed you earlier. And there's the reset button up here if you need to. Um, you know, common chips that are available for, for that and what these look like on those chips. Um, how to set up Clipper, for instance, um, for, you know, screens, make menu screens for CAN boot, Clipper, um, in bridge mode and not in bridge mode. So in my case, because I'm not running in bridge mode, I'm going to leave the um, interface basically the same way the CAN boot is configured currently. 
And so I'm going to go back to my terminal window. Sorry, some keystroke errors here on my part. And now what we want to do is build Clipper. So I'm going to go back, um, cd dot dot space dot dot goes up one directory level. Um, and so I'm going to go back to the home directory for the Pi user and I'm going to cd Clipper. And in here, again, I'm going to do make menu config. Change my controller architecture once again to be for the F446. And I use a 12 megahertz crystal and communications interface is still USB on PA11, PA12. I'm not making any changes here. I'm just flashing Clipper the same way I would if I wasn't using CAN bus at all. Um, so. Uh, that's the way I'm going to operate. The UTC allows me to leave the main board, um, the octopus in this case, intact so that I don't need to do anything else. I'm going to quit and save, and then I'm going to do a make. process takes a moment or two, but it's almost done. up and wait and we're done all right so we now have a, a clipper.bin file that is ready to be flashed to the main, the main board as well just going to double check a couple of things here so lsusb shows me that i have an open moco the open moco line that's the first line reported here uh, with the stm 44 f446 at the end um, that is the um, the octopus MCU. So that's uh, basically what it looks like when you've flashed some firmware to it. And so because CAN boot was installed there, we see that there. Um, and if I look at uh, another directory where I'm going to go to dev serial by ID, let's hope this works and doesn't give me an error. Yeah, perfect. Um, so here we can see the uh, octopus again represented here um, in a, you know, I guess, maybe more user-friendly name. Um, it's connected over USB. It's running CAN boot. We see that. It has the uh, configured for the F446 uh, chipset. And uh, there's an identifier there that's unique to the board. Um, so we're going to reference that when we go to set up uh, Clipper later. But what I really want to see is that entry, uh, instead of showing CAN boot, it should be showing Clipper, which means we have to flash Clipper to the board. And then do that next. All right, so to do that, we're going to want to go to the uh, 
back up on the GitHub repo here for on Canvas. Uh, we're going to go back to the uh, mainboard flashing page and Going to install, if you have CanBoot installed, yeah, we see that exactly. So we can see that. I'm going to use this Python script to basically flash that Clipper file out to um, out to the um, Octopus. So the way that works is I want to copy all the way up to this line, all the way up to this forward slash here before USB, and copy that. I'm going to go back to my terminal window and I paste that line in, but we're not done yet. Do not hit it. Do is also paste in this full entry all the way to the end. So I'm going to highlight that and again, right click in putty to paste. And now that line is complete and ready to go. And provided that I've followed all the steps, I shouldn't get any errors and flash success. All right, so we used the CAN boot over the USB connection to flash Clipper to the Octopus. Um, and now the Octopus is running Clipper. And let's just see what that looks like. LS USB. See that it's in DFU mode. Um, we might need to Right, because it's in DFU mode, it doesn't show up here to this. Um, so what I'm going to do is Control Shift Three, pull it out of DFU mode by changing the uh, removing the boot jumper. Now I'm going to do this while it's powered off. So to power it off, in this case, I'm going to pull the USB out of the Pi. The octopus is now powered down. I'm going to use my little tweezers here to remove this boot jumper. And power it back up. And having done that, let's see if my Results in the terminal window have changed. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. So we're now no longer in DFU mode and the uh, Clipper board is showing up here uh, with the ls forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by dash ID command. Um, and we'll see that, you know, it looks similar to it did up top here uh, with the same, you know, we'll call it a serial number or UID um, at the end of it, but instead of can boot, it now says Clipper. So that tells us that the uh, Clipper software has been flashed to the octopus and we're ready to go. So this is step one of the um, CAN bus tutorial. Uh, we've gotten the main board working. Uh, next step will be to flash the UTC with some firmware and get it connected. Uh, it is going to require me to um, do some wiring on my test bench here. So uh, what I will do is I'm going to stop this video here, but look for part two, uh, which I'm going to produce right now. Uh, but I'll cut this video off at this point, and uh, hopefully you follow through with the next steps. Thanks for watching.